ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕೆಂಟರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ವ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಬೈ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅವಸ್ಕಾರ್ಥಾಧೀರ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನಾತ್ ಪುರುಷಸ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಪ್ನೀವಾತ್ಯ ತಧ್ಯಾನಾದ್ the subject matter here is that we are not this body we are eternal spirit soul has anyone ever heard that before i hope so yeah. we should hear this repeatedly again and again because we have a tendency to think well i already know that theoretically we may know it do a uh, what is that that 13 questions examination Yeah, so I already passed that, so finished. I don't need to know that anymore. Already understood completely. No. Not, it's uh, not such an easy thing to understand. No. Even theoretically to understand it is one thing, but to realize that is something else. Here we see Kuber speaking to Dhruva Maharaj, who is a great devotee of Krishna, that you are not this body. Not that Dhruva Maharaj doesn't know that, but sometimes in the... Uh, hurly burly you know how to translate that no sometimes in the uh ongoing prevarications of material life okay. the changing circumstances of material life sometimes application of this is not very easy often even among devotees we see that there are sometimes some different kinds of feelings because of the bodily concept of life is that here also i can imagine because there's so many different races all here is there sometimes some kind of feeling like that maybe maybe someone is saying oh those you those ukrainians or those georgians or those russians or something like that because the bodily concept of life is difficult to shake off and even when we're practicing devotional service it's not that as soon as we walk into the temple we're immediately freed from the actions and reactions of the modes of material nature when we come to krishna conscious we come with our material conditioning so the material conditioning we have that is the result of accumulation of material contaminations for millions of lifetimes so we may be thinking i am russian or i am american or i am chinese but the mentality we have is not just concerned with this body but with the contaminations over millions of lifetimes and, and in this particular birth we have got a particular body and mind mentality which is suitable to the contamination to the combination of the modes of nature that we have a, that we have been situated in at this present time the living entity in material nature is traveling throughout different bodies in 8,400,000 species of life yeah. and according to the modes of material nature he identifies with the mentality that he is at that particular time situated in yeah. we see there are different kinds of mentalities we speak of uh, russian mentality or maybe british way of thinking something like this yeah. when we think of a british person we tend to think of very formal kind of person stiff up a lip this called it's called stiff up a lip that means it's stiff like this it should never go like this and maybe when we think of italians we think of very vivacious kind of people and there are so many different kinds of mentalities i remember when i first came to russia that uh, Premavati was telling that the Russians are very hearty people. So what this means is that different living beings who come to the they're ready to come into the human form of life according to their menta- those with similar mentality they're 
put together. And they're put together to enjoy and suffer in the same kind of way. And there's uh, there's always the tendency to think that this is the best way. I'm sure we'll find that in Russia, most of the people think that Russia is the best country in the world. That I remember we were going on the... Last, last year I was here, we were going on the train and some soldier was... Some man had just come from Chechnya. He was in the same compartment as us. So he was chastising the devotee who was me that we are Russian, we are Russian. Yeah. We are not this. Soldat we are Russian. Yeah. So in every country that tendency is there to think that our country is the best. Everyone thinks that my country is the best. Because I was born there, so I must be the best. Everything about this country is the best. This is called Maya. Maya means that which is not. Every situation in the material world is simply one of suffering. Whether you suffer in Russia or in America, it's all the same. Generally, all over the world, people think America is the best country. Let us go to America, then we will be happy. But it's not true. I just came from America and I didn't see all the people dancing in ecstasy in the streets because they're in America. But it's the same struggle. Everywhere, all over the universe, it's the same struggle. Useless struggle. Everyone is struggling to be happy. But they don't know how to be happy. Mm. Only the devotees of Krishna know how to be happy. There's one little secret how to be happy. You'll see there are so many, maybe not in Russia, but in the Western countries, there are so many books about how to improve your life, how to manage your time, how to have more happy family life, how to improve your sex life, how to improve your business. So many books. The aim is how to make your life better and happy. But they have no idea how to be happy. But the devotees of Krishna, they can tell you in one line how to be happy. You can take all these books and burn them, make chapatis. We have one line from Bhaktivinoda Thakur which can solve all the problems of the world. Jeev Krishna Das E Vishas Kurle Ta or Dukonai Radha Krishna Bol Bol Bolo Reshobai. That's all. That's all the problems of the world solved. First word, Jiva. We are not these bodies, we are eternal spirit soul. Of course, to explain this and understand this may take so many different books. But the basic understanding is very simple. We are not this body. Then we are eternal spirit soul and we are eternal servants of Krishna. Then again you need millions of books to explain who is Krishna. But the basic point is very simple. No. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead and we are his eternal servant. And if we just understand that, then all our problems are finished. Because all our problems are caused by forgetting Krishna. Krishna bhuli se jiva nadi bahimuk atev maya tari deya shongshara duk. What is the cause of suffering? Because we forgot Krishna, we are inimical towards Krishna since time immemorial. And therefore we are suffering in this material world. And the, the original cause of suffering is forgetfulness of Krishna. But then that suffering takes the form of identification with the body. And everyone in the material world makes this huge mistake of thinking they can be happy by identifying with the body. Massive, colossal mistake. Because this is the cause of all distress. The cause of all distress in the material world is identification with the body. But we are thinking we'll be happy in terms of the body. Because of this illusion, we are thinking we'll be happy in terms of the body. Let me get a, a nice wife or husband to enjoy this body with. Then we will have a nice apartment and we will live very happily. Then Ato, Ato Griha Kshetra, Kshetra means land. We will have a nice dacha and we will grow carrots. Ato Griha Kshetra Suta Suta and we'll have nice children and money and relatives and social life and we shall be happy. Have you seen the photos in people's house? You see the photo of wedding day. They're standing there on the wedding day. And husband and wife, newly married, are smiling very happily, thinking now we shall be very happy. My sweetheart, my sweetheart, can you translate that? What? Yeah. What? What? No, they're thinking that, they're thinking, my wife, yeah, they're thinking about each other. My, my darling, 
honey. sweetheart, <laughs> honey. But then when you come in the home and you see, they don't smile like that anymore. When you see, now they were smiling like that on the wedding day and that was the last time they smiled like that. Because they were, t- <laughs> they were dreaming they would be happy like that, but they weren't. So all the brahmacharis are thinking, this is only propaganda. <laughs> but the grihastas, they know. They have realization. <laughs> that uh, this identification with the body becomes, is, the disease becomes more acute when you plunge yourself into enjoying seriously on the bodily platform in married life. But fortunately, even in married life, the same information is true, that if we simply understand we are not this body, we are eternal soul, we are eternal servant of Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then then no more difficulties, no more. So people may ask, well, how is that possible? Simply by understanding Krishna, that all your problems are finished. Does that mean that the landlord will no longer want the rent from you? That's one problem, paying the rent. You mean if I join the Hare Krishna movement, that they, they will pay my rent for me? That the babies will stop crying in the middle of the night? These things will go on. It's not that because you become a devotee of Krishna that... When you walk in the street, the rain doesn't fall on your head. The material conditions continue, but a person in knowledge doesn't identify with that. He knows that all suffering is due to identification with the body. Therefore, he doesn't identify with the body. Then all his suffering is finished. That doesn't mean that a devotee is a fool, that if it's pouring with rain, he doesn't take an umbrella. No, he takes an umbrella because he thinks, I have to protect this body not so that I can enjoy this body, but so that I can use this body to serve Krishna. This is the platform of transcendental bliss, doing everything for Krishna's sake. Sometimes people criticized our devotees. Why, why are you doing this? Why are you practicing this Krishna consciousness? Why have you become a monk? No. You should get a job, do some work. You're simply sitting in the temple and singing all day. They don't know how hard our devotees are working. What hours do the people work here? Nine to five, is it? No. What is it? Not like eight hours. Mm-hmm. No, but you see, in just like in ah, yeah, I see. Yeah, from nine, nine o'clock five. in the morning, nine to five. Yeah. I was just in Germany. Everyone starts work there at six thirty in the morning, and they go up to five o'clock. Real mood house. <laughs> so anyway, most people they work from nine till five. But in our Krishna conscious movement. We start before 4 o'clock in the morning and go up till 10 o'clock at night. So we're very busy, but we're not working. That means we're working, but we're serving Krishna. This, so uh, all our wo- That's not the same as working for some nasty boss. But serving Krishna, it's all just like play. So we're working very hard, but we don't feel it's like some drudgery. Devotees are happy to serve Krishna, isn't it? Are you all happy to serve Krishna? Krishna? Sometimes you see even people, they, they, they become upset at our devotees. That why are they so happy? They should be miserable like me. What, what right are they to be so happy? But actually, devotees are happy by serving Krishna. Mm. So this is the proof that Krishna consciousness is a fact. Prabhupada, he always used to say that our Krishna conscious movement is not a religion, it's a science. And we find that in Bhagavatam, it's written, Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayati. This is the science of knowledge of God, by understanding which one becomes liberated from material contamination. So what does science mean? Science means that you should be able to do some experiment and it will come out as predicted. You mix one chemical with another chemical and you can expect a certain reaction. Acid and alkali you mix and you get some effervescence, some reaction, then salt and water is produced. That's scientific. Come on, you're a scientist. You're a scientist, right? She's uh, he's, he's a scientist. I'm not. So in the same way, Krishna consciousness is a science. Jeev Krishna das ebishas koraleta ardu konai radha Krishna bol bol bolo resho bai. We understand we're not the body, we're eternal spirit soul, servant of Krishna. Therefore, we chant Hare Krishna and we're happy. 
So we can very scientifically say that anyone who takes to Krishna consciousness becomes happy. You can do an experiment that we can take any miserable person and fill them up with halava prasadam no. and then bring them into the kirtan and make them dance and they'll be happy. And the more you serve Krishna, the more you become happy. That's a fact we can all perceive in our lives. That when we're thinking, I am this body and I should do something to look after my body and why should I serve Krishna, then we're miserable. And when we s stop listening to all this garbage which is going through our minds, when we get off the mental platform, and when we just serve Krishna without any thought of any personal gain, then automatically we become ecstatic. Is it a fact or not? What is your experience? It's a fact. So we should remind ourselves of these things from time to time, that we are not these bodies. We cannot be happy by identifying with the body. We can only be happy by serving Krishna. So this is the mental adjustment we need to make. All the time we're slipping back into this maya consciousness. Let me enjoy this body. So regularly we should hear these facts that we are not the body. We can only be happy by serving Krishna. Become convinced about that. So that we go on and on throughout life being convinced of this. Otherwise, unless we discuss this, even these basic points, there is a tendency to forget. So we should remind ourselves. And if we don't, then we come to Bhagavatam class and then Prabhupada will remind us. In the purports, Prabhupada is constantly stressing this point. We are not this body. This is not me. It seems to be me, but it's not. Because it's only temporary. But I'm not temporary. I'm eternal. I'm eternal servant of Krishna. This body is only so many horrible things. Every part of the body is simply a cause of suffering. See, now the cold season is coming and the skin will crack. We'll get cold and cough. And the wind will blow and we'll have to dress up in warm clothes. See, we, so many arrangements have to be made just to keep the body warm. Buildings with doors which close very tight. Heating arrangement. Mm -hmm. Big heavy warm clothes. The body is simply a cause of suffering. So better make some arrangement that when we leave this body, we don't get another material body. That arrangement is Krishna consciousness. By taking up Krishna consciousness seriously, we prepare to become liberated, to never get another material body again. Our aim is to get a spiritual body in the spiritual world with Krishna. In the spiritual world, there's no minus 30 degrees winter. And you may think, well, that's not Russian. We want to be Russian. But uh, <laughs> just like the worm in stool, if you take the worm out of stool, the worm will feel offended and will go back to the stool, back home, back to the stool. <laughs> so we should know what our real home is. Our real home is nowhere in this material world. Mm -hmm. Our real home is back home, back to Godhead with Krishna. So we should chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Don't translate that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Did you say we should chant that? And here, Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Become convinced we are not these bodies. There's no enjoyment in this material world. For all these advertisements are trying to convince us it's all a bluff. Real happiness is in the spiritual world with Krishna. So let us become convinced of that. Then we'll immediately be happy even in this life and prepare ourselves for a permanent life of unending bliss in the spiritual world with Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any question, please? Yes. Srila um, Prabhupada once said that the uh, purity of religion cannot be proved experimentally because experiment is a, is a, uh, is a, is an imperfect mean. Yeah, the experimental method, that means the... Uh, ascending method of gaining knowledge. 
So that is not the perfect method of gaining knowledge. Yeah. The perfect method of gaining knowledge is to receive knowledge from authorities, descending. Knowledge comes down. However, the perfection of religion is not simply knowledge, but that has to be applied in practical life. As Lord Krishna states in the Bhagavad Gita, Pratyakshavagamang dharmyam susukam kartam avyayam that the perfection of religion can be practically experienced in the uh, blissful performance of those duties. So we receive knowledge from higher authorities, but then we should see what is the result. If by following some so-called religious process, we don't understand who is God, we don't become detached from material life, we don't become happy, then what is the value of such a so-called religion? The Bhagavatam teaches us, Bhakti Parishanu Bhavo Virakti Ranyatra Chaisha, that uh, the performance of Krishna consciousness bestows devotion, attachment to Krishna, and concomitant detachment from everything material. Should... Uh, what is it? What is that? Should trit? Oh, just uh, just like a person who's eating, then automatically they feel satisfaction, nourishment, and cessation of hunger automatically by eating. So when we say uh, experiment, it's not the uh, just not like the blind experiment of. Uh, of mental speculators. Rather, we receive knowledge from the perfect source, from Krishna and the representative of Krishna. And we verify that in our practical lives. We can practically experience that Krishna consciousness is a fact by applying it in our lives. You want to translate that? In the second chapter of Gita, Lord Krishna states that uh, one of the symptoms of a self-realized person is that he's not disturbed by the different kinds of thoughts that come in his mind, just like the waves, the, the rivers enter into the sea, so the thoughts may enter the mind. In other words, such thoughts may come, but an advanced transcendentalist he doesn't identify with those thoughts. Prabhupada also often used to quote that prayer of Yamuna Acharya, that since I have taken to Krishna consciousness, whenever the thought of sex life comes in my mind, I spit on it. In other words, the thought may still come, but he doesn't dwell on that thought, he rejects it. We are living in the, in the material world, we're living in the atmosphere of maya. So it's just like uh, if it's raining, then the rain is there, but if you have a good umbrella, you don't get wet. So, living in the atmosphere of Maya, just like if you drive, you'll see so many advertisements are there, so many suggestions are there, but the, suge <laughs> the, uh, the advanced transcendentalist, he doesn't pick up that suggestion and start to think about it. He simply leaves it. Now, you are, you are quoting that... Um, the Brahman realized soul, he doesn't he's, he's, he doesn't hate the delusion. But in this verse of Yamuna Acharya, he says, Nishtivanamcha, uh, I spit on that thought of sex life. So, Brahman realized soul, he's simply neutral. But a devotee, he actually, when he thinks of his past, Involvement in Maya, he is uh, disgusted with that. 
because he thinks I should have been serving Krishna. Brahma, the, the Brahman realized so without knowledge of Krishna consciousness, he's just everything's okay. But a devotee is not like that. He thinks serving Krishna is okay and not serving Krishna is not okay. He's very extreme on this point. See, we see how Prabhupada was preaching. He wasn't just preaching that everything's all right, everything's nice. You see so many Mayavadis, they come from India. Yeah, everything's nice, holding a flower, smiling. So Prabhupada was also holding a flower and smiling, but he was preaching with a hammer. Give up this nonsense, surrender to Krishna. A, a devotee is not without emotions. His his emotions are fully developed. Devotee hates to see people engaged in Maya service, wants to see them engaged in Krishna's service. So I guess it's time for Krishna's service, beginning with prasadams. When I first joined the movement, I thought, watch this, you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you don't have breakfast till 9 o'clock. Because... <laughs> The first thing the kami is they, they get up and the first thing they drink a cup of tea, isn't it? Immediately some sense gratification. So we also have immediate sense gratification. We have darshan of the deities. Eating comes later. Anyway, there's a time for everything and now it's time for prasadam. So Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj ki.